Alrighty, so I want to teach you today how to tie a horse up safely. Uh, there's a couple of different ways, but I'm going to teach you the most simple, easy way that's safe, quick and effective. So I always like to make sure my horses get tied up to some hay bands. So this has just come off a uh, bale of hay. And when you tie hay band to a fence, you always want to make sure that it's actually attached to the post. So that if for some reason a horse did pull back because they got a fright, this will easily snap, but because the post is nice and firm into the ground, it's going to stay there and it's not going to pull a board off instead. So always wrap it around the post when you tie the hay band to the fence. So the next part of this is we're going to tie her up. So when you're tying a horse up to the fence, you want to think about them and how safe they're going to be. So can they still reach down to a bucket so that they can have water? But can they also be like they're not going to get tangled as well? So you've got to be mindful about the length of how short this is when tying a horse. So I like to kind of look at it like from the start of the halter, which is underneath her neck where the ropes attach, kind of to my armpits are kind of a good length to use. So you know that she's not going to get tangled in it, but it's also short enough um, that she can still reach to the water and things like that. So once I get that arm's length there from top of my fingers to my armpit, I'm then going to put a little fold in it like that. So we're going to create a little loop. With that loop, you're then gonna put it through your hay band. And when you're doing this, you always wanna make sure that our fingers stay out of the loop or the hole. Hi, Destiny. Because um, once we start tying it off, it's more likely that you could get your fingers stuck and we wanna keep you safe. So you wanna put the loop through your hay band, pull it out. You then have a little bit left over. So the tail that's at the end, that's not attached up here at the halter, you're actually gonna get it and create another loop, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna push it through that loop that's in the hay band like that. And you're gonna send it through there. And I'm see how I'm keeping my hands out of that loop at all times. And so now it's through, I'm gonna get it. And then the part that attaches through to Desi's halter, I'm gonna hold and then tighten it like that. Okay, now I have myself a quick release knot. Okay, you can see there's a little bit of tail left over depending on how long your lead rope is, will determine if you need to loop this again. So if it's a little bit longer, you could then create another loop and send it through like that. And that way it will stay off the ground and you can keep it you know, dry and things like that. The beauty of a quick release knot is, is if you need to untie Destiny quickly, all you have to do is grab the tail, pull it and voila, we've undone it. So I'm gonna show you that one more time. I've made a pinch in my rope. I've got an arm's length. Get my hay band. We're gonna put it through here. And we're gonna create another loop and put that through the back of that first loop that we made. And then whoop, we're gonna hold the lead rope that goes to the halter and our loop and pull. And there is a quick release knot. Why don't you have a turn now? Okay, so grooming horses is a big part of looking after them. It's really important that you're grooming your horses daily so that we can check for lots of different things. When you bring your horse out of the field, you wanna make sure that you're checking them for any cuts or scratches or anything that maybe doesn't look quite normal on their bodies. But we also wanna make sure that we're checking their feet, making sure they're clean so that we can keep them safe. And like when we go to put our gear on to ride them, we're not gonna cause any friction points or places where things might rub because they've got dirt in those places. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna uh, give Destiny a, a brush and groom her and get her ready uh, for the day. And I'm gonna go through a couple of different tools that you're gonna use when grooming a horse. Okay, so a couple of the brushes that we're gonna to use today when grooming Destiny is a body brush. So a body brush is a softer brush which can be used on the entire body, okay? So that means we can use this brush on her face, around her ears, across her body, down her legs, and the back of her too. This is a great brush. It also helps not only get any like dandruff or any like dirt out of her coat, but it also helps get the oils moving in her coat, which then gives her that really shiny look. It's also really relaxing for horses and helps with their blood flow and gets the blood circulating when we groom them as well. So that's one brush we can use. We also have a curry comb. This is a curry comb used to get like some dirt out on her body. It's also great to get any hair out. So for example, Destiny has a little bit of her winter coat still on her body that we can use this brush to get out. 
but this is just a great brush to use to get any like mud or anything like that off. Uh, we also will be using today a dandy brush or also known as a hard brush. This brush is great to use on the horse's legs or around their feet. Um, we would only use this brush on their legs or their feet because it's a little bit rough to have on their body. And we'll also be using a hoof pick, which is this little tool. And this is used to clean the horse's hooves out. We have a like a little metal bit on one end, which is help, helps dig all the dirt out. And then on the other side is a little brush, which means you can then clean the foot after you've dug the dirt out. And we're gonna talk more about these different brushes as we go through Grooming Destiny. And one other brush that you may use, maybe like a hairbrush or a comb, which we would use to brush Destiny's mane and tail. Uh, today we'll only be using a hono mane because with a horse's tail, it's a little bit different to human hair. As in, if it's not clean and washed and soft, it actually pulls the hairs out really easily and it's a lot harder to grow a horse's tail hair back. So we're gonna just use this on her mane today. But I wanted to show you the different ones that you could use. So when I start brushing Destiny, I like to use the curry comb first. I find this is a really good one to get everything up. So when we start, we're gonna start up near the top of her ears and we're gonna, stroke, we're gonna brush her with the way her hair moves. Okay, so we go like this. And you can be quite firm when you're brushing her as well. As I said, it's like a massage for them. And she has spots that she really likes. And sometimes you can also use the curry comb in a circular motion. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. And so we can see here, she's got a little bit of a scab, so she must have just had a little bit of a scratch, but I'm aware of that, so we've checked that. And then we're gonna go under her neck. And as you can see, if you can see through the video, we've got a little bit of winter hair coming out here. So I'm just giving that a little round rub to try and help get that out. Okay. This is also the time of the year where ticks are starting to come out and ticks love to live in moist, damp places. So behind the horses like elbows, um, under their tail, under their back legs, they're the places we're also gonna check for ticks so that if there are any, we can remove them. So as we work our way down the neck, we're gonna to come to the horse's shoulder, okay? And then we're gonna work our way across the back. This part here is the withers. So we're gonna come across the wither, across her back here. And then we're gonna go under her belly here. And it's really important that we make sure we're getting around here because this is where the girth goes, which is the part that attaches to the saddle keep the saddle on. If there's dirt there, it actually can rub and cause like blisters and that's not very comfortable. So always double checking right under there. And then they're gonna go down the back. So once I've brushed this side, I'm then gonna go around to the other side. So there are a couple of ways that you can safely go around a horse. If you're comfortable, you can pop your hand on the back of her rump. So this is the top part of her and then you can walk around so she knows you're there. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can also go nice and wide like this to the other side. But if you put your hand on her rump, she's generally gonna know that you're there and she's gonna make sure she just stands still while you're moving around. I'm now gonna do the same thing on this side. back around and now we're actually going to use the body brush on her body so now that we've got some of this hair loose and we want to just get rid of it all so now we're going to start at the top of her neck and work our way down Destiny loves it here she's got a, a little spot that she likes being brushed so now you can see the dandruff and some of the dead skin cells are coming out now she's getting a nice shiny coat. So when I come and do her face, just back up a little bit, Destiny. Now I'm just going to hold the halter just so I can have a little more control of her head. I'm actually going to start, which I'm going to show you on that side as well, but I'm going to start up near her ears. I'm just going to gently brush her face. Okay. 
And it's really important that when you're brushing them that you just gently approach their face. As I said, I like to approach the side here first so that they can feel it coming towards their face so they're not gonna get startled. And then you just brush around the face. As I said, Destiny loves being brushed. She falls asleep half the time. There's the body brush and we've done her face and her body. And then next we're gonna get our dandy brush or our hard brush. And we're gonna go over her legs. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the top here and I'm gonna brush down with our hard brush. So we're gonna go down like that. It's really important that if you are getting lower to the ground around the horses that you're just squatting down versus putting your bottom on the ground because if a horse got a fright or well, you need to move quickly, it's going to be much easier to go from here and get out the way than if you're sitting on the ground. So always make sure you're just squatting next to them. Down a leg. And can you see I'm also on the side of her, so I'm out the way of her feet here. You know, and, and during the summertime as well, there's lots of flies around sometimes, so they may stomp their legs. That's very normal. They're not trying to stomp on you. They're just trying to get those flies out the way because they're getting a little irritated. And you can also brush the inside of the other leg from this side. And this is a really good chance for you to feel the horse's legs, okay? To make sure there's like no swelling in the legs. Do they have any cuts or sores or anything like that? You can go through that. Then we go to the back leg. You can start about here. My hand's on her bottom so she knows I'm here. And then I'm gonna work my way down. Get the backs of her legs. And then I'm gonna Grab her tail, let's move that out of the way so I can get the inside of the other leg. Okay, and we're gonna come around the other side and do the same thing again. We were pretty lucky today. Destiny was nice and clean uh, because it hasn't been raining and she hasn't been rolling in the mud. But definitely when it rains, the horses love to have a good roll and so she's probably gonna have a lot more dirt on her, on her back and under her belly. So that's where she's gonna need a really extra good brush. But she's looking pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is give her mane a quick brush and then we're gonna move to her feet. So we're gonna get a hairbrush or a comb. You can use a brush that you may use on your hair or a comb. Um, there's lots of different ones you can get. So we're gonna come around this side. I'm just going to start at the top of her neck and just give it a little brush. Kind of like your hair, you're just going to slowly work your way down it. You know, it's also really important that you, when grooming your horses, you know, you groom them so they look presentable. Um, you know, if you're having lessons and stuff, it's always a riding etiquette to have your horse neatly presented. Um, show that you have horsemanship skills and you understand why it's important to groom your horse. Then you can also do the forelock up the front here. So this bit here between her ears is called the forelock. Okay. You can see right now Destiny's ears are kind of just to the side. That means she's relaxed, content and enjoying her brush. All right, so there's our mane. She's all groomed. Now let's do the feet. I also have another part to cleaning her feet and that is also painting her feet with hoof oil. So hoof oil can be used in the winter and the summer year round ultimately. In the summertime we use hoof oil to make sure that we keep her feet a little more soft because they tend to dry out more in the summer because the grounds are more dry, they're not as wet so they're not getting that moisture through their feet. In the winter time we may add something like tar to our hoof oil to help harden the feet up so they're not as soft in the winter so that they can still be ridden and things like that. Um, so today we're just gonna be using our summer hoof oil and we will be painting the inside of her feet and also the outside of her feet. So we're gonna do that as we clean her feet out. So when cleaning their feet out, we have a few things to keep you safe. You're gonna stay at the side of her here, like next to her shoulder. And when you wanna lift her foot up, you're gonna run your hand down her leg and then you're gonna lean against it a little 
and you might have to just give a little squeeze on the back of her fetlock here where this hair is and then you're going to lift it up okay so then what i like to do is i'm right-handed so i'm more comfortable putting my left hand under her foot so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to get my left hand and hold it under her hoof okay and then that way i've got a good grip of it now she may try and push her pull her leg out a little that's because she's trying to get the flies off so don't be afraid to hold on to it because um, she's not trying to hurt you she's just a little irritated by the flies so then we're going to have a closer look at her foot now and what we're going to do so over here we have the frog which is this triangle part inside so that is part of the foot and often when horses so she doesn't currently have shoes on but if she had shoes on um, sometimes the mud there's more mud in here and dirt sometimes this is a little harder to see but just so you know this is the frog and this is part of the horse's foot so we're actually going to start up below the heel here so we have the heel across here and with our pick we're going to scoop that out both sides and then the rest of her foot now we're lucky today she doesn't have much in here but sometimes there's a little more so we want to make sure we get it all out i'm now using my brush to scrape the rest of that dirt out um, when we're cleaning feet, it's really important that we do clean them before and after we ride because we want to make sure there's no stones in there, um, sticks, anything that's stuck in there because if there is and we do ride her, um, or even if she's just in the field, it's important to pick them daily because it can cause stone bruising and then it can build up abscesses and things like that and it makes it very uncomfortable for the horses to walk on. So now we've picked her feet out, we're going to get our hoof oil. If you like painting this is kind of fun but on a horse's foot so what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the whole foot now if she had shoes on we wouldn't put it on the actual shoe it'd be on the inside but she doesn't so we're just gonna cover them up like that so now the whole heel and the foot is covered we're going to then put it down good girl okay and then we're going to actually paint the outside of our hoof between her foot and her hair there's a line here which we might have to get a little closer this is called the coronet band so we're actually going to paint from the coronet band down okay now I like to start at the top that way then the oil can drip down the foot and we're getting more use out of our oil than wasting it we can do that all the way around like that so now we have her foot cleaned and painted and she's ready to go on that foot. So now we've brushed her, we've cleaned her feet, we've painted them. She's ready to go in for a lesson or back into the field. Um, as long as they're painting their feet once a day, that's absolutely fine. You can do them before or after you ride. I like to generally do them after I ride so then they're soaking in her feet while she's in the field. So I also just want to show you how to pick up a horse's back leg. It's very similar to the front leg, but there's a little bit more trick to it. So what you're going to do is you're going to run your hand down the back of their leg, okay? And then you're going to pick it up. She may pull it up a little, but then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch it out, okay? And then I've got my left hand around here, and then I'm going to pick with my right hand. And then paint her feet like I did on the front. Now the horse's feet and legs can get a little bit heavy. So you just gotta use that arm to hold onto it. There we go. Then she might pull it up again and then she's gonna stretch it back out. It kind of feels like for the horses sometimes, imagine holding your leg back for a little bit and you've got to bend through here and then after a while you put it down you just need to stretch it out a little bit and that's what she was doing just then. So shortly after this I would get her saddled up or put her back in the field.